This tutorial is on creating functions in Flash CS4 ActionScript 3. Now we're going to do a little bit more housekeeping here because we're kind of moving more into the programming of Flash. So here we are, we've opened up Flash, we're on the screen here. There's a bunch of great stuff here, but for programming, you want to make sure you choose Flash File ActionScript 3. So we're going to click that, and up comes the Flash interface. Now we want to start ActionScript programming, so what we're going to do is move from the stage view to the ActionScript panel. And the way you do that is hit the F9 key, or just hit Windows and go to Actions. And we're going to click on that, and we have our Actions panel here, and this is where you do all your programming. Now let me say just a little bit about this panel, because it really was one of the, the greatest attractants to me as far as using Flash was concerned many years ago. I started Flash uh, in the transition between 5 to 6. And to that point, I had done, of course, tons of Fortran programming and, you know, academic stuff. And I had done Visual Basic. And we wanted to put stuff on the web. We wanted to create interactive web courses to teach uh, electronic engineering. And, of course, we were really building those applications in Visual Basic. And Flash started to gear up. And, of course, you know, to the transition to 6, you started to get some uh, nice action scripting. And what was great about this panel is that you could just code right in this panel and run your program and just throw it right on the web. And that was so incredible because you weren't setting up classes, you weren't setting up all the framework to make it run, that was all handled automatically by the Flash player. Now, with ActionScript 3, you're going to start setting up classes and building all that stuff, but for now, we're going to learn how to program in this ActionScript panel, and let's get to that right now. So now we're going to talk about functions. And functions are extremely important in any language that you learn, specifically in Flash. Flash is an event-driven language, which means that there's a listener out there, and whenever something occurs, then it causes a method or a function to be fired. Now in the last section, we actually created two strings, a text1 and text2, Mike and Lively, and we added them together in a trace statement using concatenation. But now we're going to use a function. So how do you create a function? What you do is use the word function, go ahead and type that in, and then you create a name, any name you want. And we're going to call it myfunk in this instance, and we're going to have a return type of void. Now in ActionScript 2, that was a capital V, in ActionScript 3, that's a small v. Return type means we're not returning anything, we're actually executing it inside the function. So typically you have some type of variable that's receiving the results in that function. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to come along here and get off of this uh, type there, and that's going to remove these trace statements. One second, control Z, made a little error there. So basically to run the function, what you want to do is just repeat the name of the function in your action script code. So let's run the test. Go to control, test movie. And there you go, Mike Lively, that was it. <laughs> Nothing stellar about that, but it is your first basic function. So let's go back and do a little bit more work here. All right, so Another thing you can do that's really cool is you can actually put variables into a function, and that's really what makes it rock. You can actually, and this, you know, you can imagine that maybe you've got a letter that you're sending out to a thousand people, and you don't want to have to go in and type their name a thousand times. So you have a function that receives the first name and the last name in the form letter and sends that out. And let's go ahead and run that. And basically, the way you do that is you come along here and you basically just put the name or that's going to receive and the type first name, last name. Now you can put anything in here just as long as you have it in your function below. So what it's going to do is going to actually do this. It's going to take that variable that whatever goes inside that and put it into your function there and your last name and put it into your function there and run it. So whatever goes inside the function is received. So down here is actually what I want to draw your attention to. Here's my func name which is the name of my function and here's the first variable which is an and the second variable, which is lively, you see that? Okay, so Anne goes into the first name, and last name is lively goes into the last name. And when you run that function in the timeline, the results are, let's take a look at that real quick. So let's remove the trace statement here. And now let's run that real quick. And we can see the results were Anne Lively, my sister's name. So let's move on. 
So now that you've learned how to create variable names and stick those into functions, let's go a little further and actually work with a return type. And in this case, we're actually going to stick a number uh, one and a number two into a function and return uh, the number plus one plus the number times the first number times the second number. So to do this, first of all, you have to have your variable numbers one and two, and you have to have a return type of number. And as opposed to tracing it, you're going to use return plus the function that you're going to return. So let's come down here and let's uncomment that real quick. And let's run the function. And you can see it's 8. Now, did that work out? Let's go back and look at our method. And we have here 2 plus 2 times 3, which is 6 plus 2, which is 8. So that all works out. So let's go to the next part. And what I want to do here is I'm basically just going to take the results of a function and throw it into a variable, which is needed sometimes. So all I did is pretty much is create a variable, data typed it as a number, and ran my function. So let's do that real quick. And once again, I get 8 back, so that's, you know, that's pretty cool. So let's run back and do the next one. Let's keep going. What I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to define a variable 1 and a variable 2, and these are integers and I'm going to run some trace statements on them. And what I'm going to do here basically concatenate my value 1 is equal to my value 1 and my value 2 is equal to my value 2. And what I'm going to do as opposed to putting numbers in to the function, I'm actually going to stick these variables into the function. So let's go to our next sta trace statement. And in that trace statement I'm going to return so that return, my number return to, which has a return value of number, that function is going to actually be run in my trace statement. So I'm going to show the first value plus the second value is equal to the value of the return statement. So actually what it's taking is actually coming along here. And this is important now. Let me get, take, belabor this just a little bit. It's actually taking this value here. It's actually taking this first value and putting it into this method and this second value input is this method. So you're not actually dealing with numbers, you're dealing with variables, and this is so important because you're going to be manipulating variables, not numbers, because uh, you have to hard code numbers, and variables actually are dynamically done. So that's actually what you want to do. Let's get off that. Sorry about all my scribbling there on the screen. And let's run that and see if it works. And indeed, you see the first variable is 5, the second variable is 6, so when you add variable 1 plus variable 2, you get 11. And that's very important to be able to stick those variables into your functions and actually have that return stuff. All right, here, let's move on a little bit further. Now, I want to actually show you a real example of a function actually being used in a program. So I built this function uh, for the book, and it actually didn't make the book. Another one did, but it actually explodes uh, something on a scene. And I want to talk about this method just a little bit, because you're going to see something a little bit different here. I, I've got a function, and it's the explode function. I call it explode, and I made the name up. But now it's got a little event, mouse event. And what I've done here, in a sense, I've actually, the function needs to receive the event data. And so what kind of event data is it? It's a mouse event data. So I'm actually telling it what kind of event is happening. So one, remember I said earlier that Flash what is an event-driven language. And I'm going to tell you, you could actually, in some instances, get away with leaving this blank. What I found is when you do that, you can pick up errors. And you don't want to pick up errors in your program when it's running. So whenever necessary, make sure, especially when you're clicking with a mouse, that you've got that mouse event handler in there and they've actually showed what type of mouse event it is. So in this particular case, let me just go real, through it real quick. We're treating these exploding uh, images as particles. Each image is broken up into a movie clip. The movie clip is treated as a particle. And so when the function is run, boom, your uh, basically pieces are treated as particles and they're giving different velocity x, different velocity v, randomized. They have gravity, they have friction, and they have spin, and these particles are thrown out in many different directions. So let's go ahead and run that program and show you how it runs. And like I said, this one did not make the book, isn't that sad? But another one did, actually a three-dimensional one. This is actually two-dimensional. So it says, hey, please don't blow me up, and come along here. You click on the guy, boom, he blows up. And click on the house, boom, that blows up. And you can even click on the letters, and that blows up, and click on the other letters. Please don't blow me up, and boom, that all blows up. So everything's blowing up, and it all basically is based upon a function. And so this is great stuff and we're going to get more into this as we get into the next topic of events.